Uh, so we had to build a completely, f like we had to build a, a logistics fleet, right? We have we had to buy bikes, we had to get coaching equipment, the right state of the art coaching equipment, just to be able to, you know, um, get the blood that we've helped them find, that we've discovered for the hospital to the to yeah. the hospital in time to save the patient. And and that that was like a significant challenge for us to actually just have to become not just a technology company but a logistics, logistics company, company as yeah. well. <laughs> With so. a small company and a small team having to do that. Uh, you know, it took a lot of resources and a lot of hard work. Yeah. Um, and then also we have to be open twenty four seven and actually have like a you know call center, have dispatch ready round the clock, uh, but, but it's been really incredible and um, rewarding work for us. One of the biggest fears for a lot of people who receive mm. blood is always how mm. safe it is. Right. How, how safe is blood in Nigeria? And what sort of checks are in place in a country like this where we know how people can be mm. shoddy with jobs generally? Mm. Uh, does that also seep into that, 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 that's part of, that part of things? I think it's as safe, uh, and so I also so defer uh, to uh, Dr. Wally, but I think it's as safe as it can be um, in, in Nigeria. Uh, especially, and it, it differs with different um, states. Okay. Lagos State has done a really fantastic mm -hmm. job, particularly. Um, and I think Abu, uh, Ibada as well is working, oh, all your yeah. state is working on, on their system as well. They've done a fantastic job in yeah. also having centralized screening. So now in Lagos State, Lagos State's blood transfusion service does all the screening of all the blood that yeah. is transferred into a patient. So do you test before you take the blood or after you receive the so blood? So you take the blood and then you move it to Lagos State. And then so they it's Screening okay, system, okay. and then Lagos State itself does the testing and stamps the blood and says this blood is certified. you know clean and certified yeah. barrels, mm -hmm. and it can be transfused into yeah. a patient. So, so you're talking about receiving now. Uh, do you face re religious challenges for people who maybe need blood and they say, oh, my pastor or my imam or whatever, my religion is against receiving someone else's blood? Yes. How do you yes. deal with situations like that? There have been cases where you'd find, say, a mother who just gave birth would not. Um, want to accept blood because our church or our organization or our ethnic group doesn't accept or allow for receiving blood. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the best you can do is try to convince and have that conversation with our relatives around. And sometimes they do eventually accept it and sometimes they don't. Mm -hmm. um, there have been cases where they were discharged. You try as much as possible to use other sources, other things, um, other hematics, uh, hematinics rather, for, um, you know, getting their blood level up. But there's no replacement for blood. So yeah. the idea is to always try to have the conversation with the relatives, the importance, and you know, let them understand that not much can be done if they don't get the blood that is needed to be given at that time. Yeah. I can give an example where a woman really actually wanted to get the blood, but the family and the relatives were still saying no. And you know, eventually she called someone at the side and like, please give me this. Just blood. give me this. <laughs> and you know, so they find a way around it, but it's still an actual problem. Yeah. So the idea is to continually have these conversations with opinion leaders, with church yeah. and ethnic groups and you know, things like that, and mosques even, mm -hmm. to uh, understand that you know, blood is, is life. Yeah. So whoever needs it at a particular time, please let them get it. Yeah, yeah. very, very, very important. Absolutely. With, with donations now, what, what are the donor numbers uh, with regards to your right. particular organization? Right. And maybe if you have an idea of what, it, what obtains nationwide. Right. So, um, <coughs> about, so we collect about um, two, between 1.8 and, and 2 million pints of blood every single year in Nigeria. Okay. So that's the need level. Still very low compared to our population. But that's because a lot have. of people die. That, that's what we do. Like yeah, yeah. about what between one point seven. So we probably need off of the top of my head, probably need about like four million yeah, based right. on our population okay. to actually make sure no one dies from blood shortage, okay. right? Um and ten percent of the one point between one point five and one two million that we collect is from uh, you voluntary. know voluntary donors. Sixty mm -hmm. percent just ten percent. Sixty percent is from paid donors. Uh, thirty percent is from family replacement. Basically, you have yeah. a child and you have to give blood to your child, and then only ten percent is from voluntary donor. At Life Bank, we're we're completely obsessed with getting that ten percent to hundred percent. That's our big dream to get that ten percent to hundred percent. And what we have to do is ensure that the Nigerian people give blood um, for a man every three months and for a woman every four months. And we've built an app to make it easier. So yeah. we have this app, this web app that you can log on to on any phone What's and on your computer, lifebank.ng. Okay. So if you go there, you can log in and sign up. Uh, it takes only a minute. And we send you reminders every single, every three, three months that it's time to give blood. And then you can book an appointment right off the app. Who and cannot give blood very quickly? Okay, who cannot give blood? Um, so <laughs> you, you <laughs> can't give blood, <laughs> you're looking at, um, 
people with particular illnesses, of course, right. at that time. And then people are, you're looking at their weight. You want someone who's heavier than 50 kg, thereabouts. Okay. Um, usually, you want someone who's around 18 and above, 18 okay. to 65. And if minors can give, people younger than 18 can give, but with the consent of their parents or their guardian. Um, also, you're looking at people, of course, their blood level. You want to get blood from someone who has a lot right. of it or yeah. who has relatively right. amount um, the right of amount. it. The right, right. amount, exactly. Right. Um, so, yeah, those are basically the um, exclusions or the people that can't give blood. Okay. Yeah, so, but before you, when you actually go to the blood bank to give blood, the first thing they'll do is do a medical mm -hmm, checkup. Mm -hmm. So, they have all. to check your you know, blood pressure, they have to check your weight, they have to check your temperature, they have to go like, give you a medical checkup. And once they realize that you're fine, you have enough blood in your body, you're not sick, and you're well, then and only then can they actually yeah, collect yeah, blood. Absolutely. So it's, it's pretty safe, the system, yeah. the, the process is very safe. Are there any health benefits to giving blood? Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, there are. I mean, there are studies that show that people that give blood are less likely to get some cardiovascular diseases. Um, also, when you give blood, you sort of renew your blood. Okay. I mean, you have new blood cells. Mm -hmm. And then also, um, I recently read that there are some studies going on that shows that um, less chances of cancer if okay. you give blood mm -hmm. i mean so and of course there's still that good effect mm -hmm. of i gave blood and, and i probably saved three yeah. people <laughs> up to three people so yeah. i mean there's all that yeah. um advantages and all those advantages rather yeah. that's yeah. yeah and it's i know you're a fit fam right <laughs> <laughs> blood, you yeah. when you give blood you burn about 650 calories from just giving that yeah, one final blood a little excited, right? <laughs> <laughs> so giving so blood is, fun is fun. Fun, exactly <laughs> What, what, finally, now before we go, what does a day like this hope to achieve, uh, the World Blood Donor Day? So the, the World Blood Donor Day is, um, the theme this year is give, give, give blood, give often, give now, and give, give now. Often. Give now, give often. And it's just making a habit, right? Yeah. It's a good thing to do. It literally means someone's life. When you give that one bag of blood, th there are only benefits for you. But what, what it means is you give someone a gift of life. Basically, yeah. I'm just going to save your life with this bag mm -hmm. of blood. It's an incredible, selfless, amazing thing to do. And, and, and I am on a mission to make it a habit in Nigeria and to help save lives too. Thank you through very that. much, Timmy. Um, go to livebank.ng, yes. like she said. Yes. Of course, thank you very much, Dr. Wally, for enlightening us. And um, thank you. I hope a lot of people have been gingered yes, <laughs> to be a fun. part of the movement. Please, please make sure you are. Thanks for joining us today. All right, thank you we'll so come much. back with more right here on Robin Minds. Please stay with us. Uh -huh. So let's dance now, it is my turn. Just one word to